So today we take a look at CPU or processor problems in my troubleshoot series and this is part 4. Coming up, roll the intro. Hey Nimtags and welcome, this is Ash from Hilmai Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. On this channel we do repairs, reviews and tutorials of tech, including sharing some entrepreneur tips to help you unleash your true potential. Now if you've just stumbled across this video, this is part 4 of my troubleshoot series. I've done one introduction, three previous videos and also two standalone videos. And uh, we are identifying 10 main components in any computer device and I'll also explain to you the computer turning on sequence and if you understand what symptoms are occurring then you'll be able to fix your problem much more easily so do go and watch these videos unless you're very tech savvy i will put a link in the description below and in the cards above right so for today's video i've got my usual setup here if uh, you know and you've been following the channel this is an older lga board this is from asus the p5w deluxe d hedge and it's got an intel at the moment an intel quad core the q6600 famous uh, previous processor an old GPU GTS uh, 6, so I think it's GTS 450 um, and a power supply 430 watt from EVGA uh, monitor and a keyboard and a mouse. I've not plugged in a hard drive because we're not testing for hard drive issues just yet. We just want to make sure that the system post. We are talking about processor, central processing unit, CPU or just processor as it's known. And uh, the good news is this, right? There is very little problems with modern processors, especially. Unless your processor comes from the manufacturing line and it's dead already, or there's a defect, or you've bought a dead processor from eBay, or you've bought a whole system and you've never used it and the processor was dead in there, then there is very little chance if your processor has been correctly installed and you're using it fine, there's very little chance of it you know, becoming defective or dying unless it's improperly installed or wrongly overclocked or there's some other issues. What I mean is if your computer was turning on fine yesterday, yeah, you, you've had the system and it's been working fine and you don't do nothing too drastic with it and you wake up this morning, turn your computer on, you have some signs uh, of, uh, you know, a fan spinning LED or even if it's not turning on at all, uh, it's, it's dead. It's not going to be, for the most part, the CPU issue. Just understand that, for the most part. I've actually never come across a single occasion where I've had to repair a, a computer and the processor died in there. Never happened. I've built a lot of systems and I've repaired a lot of systems. Not to say it will never happen. Like I said, unless if there's a default in it, there's a problem with it from manufacturer's uh, you know, line, then if you're using it correctly, it will last you a lifetime, hopefully. In my previous video, I talked about uh, the motherboard problems and one of my viewers left a comment and uh, I think it's Mr. Freaky J. Hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Thank you for the comment. He pointed out that I should have mentioned the fact there are what's called pins on a motherboard and uh, these can be bent or damaged and that can prevent your motherboard from turning on or your computer from turning on. He is correct. Now, the reason I did not mention the pins then because some pins are on motherboards and some pins are on processors itself like this one. AMD is known for having what's called PGA, pin grid array. And Intel is more known for LGA, LAN grid array, meaning AMD will have their pins on the processor chip itself, whereas Intel will have the pins on the motherboard itself. It is a lot cheaper to replace a whole motherboard than some processors. So I guess that's why Intel went that way. Because with AMD, I mean, these things are notorious. I've dropped a couple of them before. Thankfully, you know, I did manage to repair the bent pins, right? There are some pins which are active and some which are not active. If you damage a non-active one, and you remove that non-active pin, your processor will still work. The problem is it's difficult to know which one is which. Unless your pins are bent, in AMD's case, you won't even be able to plug it into or install it correctly on the motherboard. And in Intel's case, if the pin is bent and if the active pin is bent, then the computer will just not turn on. And uh, you can see, I'm gonna give you an example of uh, an Intel processor. Left one, this one, no pin. 
this one has pins yeah you can see the difference and obviously on the motherboard equivalent what if your processor is not even initializing to start with remember when i talked about the post if the correct voltage is coming in through the motherboard from the power supply then it will initialize the cpu and it will start the post system what happens if you um, forget to plug in the fan header pin connector like this one let's find out i've got my usual um system here so i'm just gonna turn the power on oh, i think it's here there you go now if you can see that the power came in from the power supply the fans is spinning but the fan is not spinning on the cooler however we've got movement on the monitor okay the fans are also spinning on the graphics card and we've heard the beep which means it did post now some systems will allow you to pause and even turn on even if this plug is not connected some systems depending on the bios configuration might not even allow you to turn this on because it will deem the temperature to be unsafe on the uh, processor okay so do bear that in mind so it's not a major issue but obviously you should always have it plugged in and i'm going to plug that in right now and there you go you can see the fans spinning okay cool now you've seen that this computer does turn on the cmos checks and bad that's to do with my battery and i still am not replacing that but that's beyond the point okay we can run setup to set that up there you go as long as you can get into bios you know everything is working fine all you need now is a hard drive with an operating system to boot into your main desktop okay i want to switch that off here's another thing which i did and i did a video on it it's called something like a uh, desktop not turning on led lights but no display something like that stupid mistake um that video was done you know quickly and i did not think there would be a lot of people looking for that kind of solution and i did not think a lot of people would do this kind of stupid mistake but do you know what according to the comments and the views a lot of people do this mistake here's what happens i've just showed you i'm going to leave this video uncut because i think one guy i don't remember his name i might find him and put it as a comment he called bs because he said the plug only connects in one way he is correct in a sense because the, you know the way the modern computers are designed it's quite easy to plug things in because they only orientate correctly in one way i'm going to show you right so this is still uncut i'm going to unplug the cpu plug okay there's a tab and there's a latch and you're supposed to match it so it connects it properly but i'm going to turn it around okay and i'm going to plug it in and it will still go in but it won't click you see that i will show you a zoomed version later it still goes in but not clicking so when i did this in a desktop because i was looking in from above it looked like the cable was correctly plugged in i didn't know that it wouldn't go in so in theory now because the pins on this plug is not making contact with the port on the motherboard there is no voltage going through which means the cpu will not initialize and the computer will not turn on although right here i can actually see there is an led light on the motherboard okay so let's do this and i'm going to leave the plug in the wrong orientation and i'm going to turn it on let's see what happens nothing 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 and yes my uh, power switch is on everything is on so i'm going to leave this uncut what i'm going to do now i'm going to take this off right okay and turn it around plug it in the correct way this time i heard the click and let's hope it turns on you might need to discharge the static electricity first yeah yeah we need to discharge the static electricity so i'm gonna i'm just gonna unplug that okay press and hold to discharge the static electricity plug it back in uh, i'm not switching the switch guys and that should work now there you go and hopefully you're gonna see the display on there come on today the beep and the display okay cool so if you don't believe that this can happen there you go the second beep means it's completed 
V pose and still looking for CMOS checksum, but we'll change the battery later. All right, so I've left this unedited and uncut just to show you it can happen. If you don't believe it, I suggest you try it, but be cautious. I don't want you to be sending the wrong voltage to your motherboard. I did this as a stupid mistake. It can happen. And that just goes to show the theory of the post as well, that if there's no correct voltage going through, the processor will not initialize, hence nothing is going to happen. The motherboard will not turn on. Okay, I'm going off this. Um, final thoughts. So I've just showed you from what I know to be issues with the processor. Obviously there are issues with overheating. If you have overclocked it wrongly or there's no correct thermal paste uh, when you install the processor or whoever installed it, then when you use the computer, if for any uh, high applications, it will overheat, it will probably switch off or even damage the processor with time. But at this stage, we are dealing with a computer not turning on or turns on, but with no display. So it's not even booted up into Windows. There are software programs and applications you can do to test your processor. Um, I don't remember the names of them right now. Um, CPU tests, you know, whatever they are. I'll put some links below, but you can do stress test of uh, your processor, especially when you are considering overclocking. How do you test for the processor? How do you know it's the processor and not the motherboard? Unfortunately, there is no um, real test to do except to take that processor and you install it in a known motherboard, a known working motherboard, which does support your processor. And that's another mistake as well. Again, if your computer was working and stops working, it, it may not be the processor. But if it's for a new build or you are upgrading to a different processor or you are, are transferring parts from a different system to a different motherboard, there is sometimes a chance that Although you think the platform, let's say it's an Intel LGA775 or LGA1151, there is a chance that the, uh, the motherboard does not support that specific processor. Although you think it should. Things like for upgrades, sometimes the motherboard needs a BIOS update. And uh, you need to really consult the manufacturer of the motherboard and the processor support list. It's the best thing to do. Don't assume just because it's the same platform or even like AM2 and AM2 platform or even AM4. Actually, I don't think at the moment we've got any issues with AM4 platforms relatively new. They should be supporting all the AMs, uh, sorry, AM4 processors, but just saying. And vice versa, uh, if you want to test the motherboard, again, you have to place in a known working processor. Again, do check for compatibility. That's about it in terms of processor and CPU. And uh, we're gonna continue with the troubleshoot series. Next one is gonna be part five, I believe, and we're gonna be dealing with RAM issues. Thank you so much for watching. You can leave me a question below and leave me in suggestions. Also like, dislike, comment, and share on this vid. And do remember to subscribe. It does help me out if you haven't done so yet. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.